Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we are going to discuss when to use client script and UI policy because both of them are used for executing the client side logic or browser side logic. We used client script and UI policy for changing the behavior of a form or forms fields. Okay, so what is the criteria or conditions under which we can use client script or UI policy? So let's begin the video. On the screen, you can see the criteria under which we can use the client script or the UI policy. So the first criteria is execute on form load. We can use both client script as well as UI policy. How? So if we go to client script, so this is the client script and there is a type field. We can select on load and perform the functionality when the form is being loaded or presented to the user. How we can perform this activity on the UI policy? We have this on load checkbox. By selecting this checkbox, we can perform the activities on the form when the form is being loaded or presented to the user. Okay. Next criteria is execute on form save, submit, or update. This functionality is available for client script, not for UI policy. Okay. So if we go to our UI policy, we don't see anything that is saying that when the form is being saved, submitted or updated, perform these operations. We can only perform the UI policy when the form is being loaded or the value of the field which is provided in the condition is being changed. Okay. And in the client script, we have type. So we can select on submit or on cell edit. Okay. So when the form is being submitted, then you can perform some operations on the form. And when there is a cell edit or there is a change on the list view, then we can perform some operation on the list view of a table records. Okay. But we cannot do these things with the help of UI policy. Next criteria is execute on form field value change. So client script as well as UI policies, we can perform this particular functionality. Okay. We can use both of them. We have the type on change with the help of on change. We can select the field in client script and perform some operations when there is a change on that particular field. And in the UI policy also, we provide a condition here regarding the field. And when the field changes, the UI policy will run. Okay. Next criteria is have access to fields old value. So client script have the access to fields old value, but the UI policy did not have access to the fields old value. So if we go back to UI policy, we see that we don't have anything in the script as well that has the access to previous value of a field. Okay. But in client script, if we see we have in which we have access to old value okay here you can see old value okay next criteria is execute after client scripts so client script that knows execute after the client script it is the ui policy which exists after the client scripts okay so your client scripts for a table will execute first then the UI policy will execute. Okay. Set field attributes with no scripting. So this is not possible with the help of client script because in client script, we have to write a script for making a field mandatory, making a field visible, making a field hidden or making a field read only. But in UI policy, we don't have to write any script for these functionality. Okay. Next criteria is require control over order of execution. So UI policy requires the control over the order of execution in which order the particular UI policy will execute. So we are going to see an example of it. But in client script by default, we don't see the order field available here. But with the help of form design, we can bring the order field on the form and use it. Okay. Just click on additional actions and configure form design and bring the order field if 
there is a requirement to change the order of a client script for a particular table okay let's see how order of execution in ui policy gets changed so if we go to ui policy so this is one of the ui policy for the incident table which is making a fields mandatory so if we add one more ui policy action in it so click on new we are going to make the configuration item field mandatory so we are going to select the field name it will be configuration item okay and now we can see the field name configuration item and in the mandatory we are going to select the true option and submit this now if we scroll down in the ui policy actions related list we can see that on the field name there is a red background color which is identifying that there are ui policies already existing for this particular field so if we open our configuration item ui policy actions it is loading we can see a message there are multiple ui policies with the same order for this field their run order is not predictable so there are multiple ui policies available for this configuration item field and the run order for that is not being identified that in which order the particular ui policy is going to run the order is same for this particular field okay and we can see these are the available ui policies which are performing some operation on the configuration item field so these are the ui policies this one this one and this one okay we can click on them and we will be redirected to that ui policy and we can change the order of that particular ui policy okay the order field is not available on the ui policy form by default you can bring that order field by using the form design or form layout we can click on additional actions and go to configure you can use form design or form layout to bring the order field on the ui policy form okay so we have covered all the criteria under which we can use the client script or the ui policy and there is one more thing to remember although the ui policy will execute after the client script but if there is a conflict between the logic of client script as well as the ui policy then the ui policy will execute first so this was the end of the video if you like this video do share the videos with others subscribe the channel for more videos like this thank you for watching bye bye